Welcome back. It's time now to introduce you to another book from CVM at Sunrise's Book Club. And the book we're featuring today is called The Renewal, Revive Everything Necessary, Empower Within. And it's written by Sally Ann Gray. Good morning, Sally Ann. How are you? Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you. All right. I mean, this is just another inspirational book yeah. um, in this month-long um, book club that we're hosting here at CV Med Sunrise. Yours sounds very in, in, inspirational by the title. Tell us what the meaning behind your book. Well, the renewal, revive everything necessary. It really speaks to a journey, a mm -hmm. spiritual journey, transition um, from who I once was to who I have now become. Oh, wow. I wasn't always inspirational. I wasn't always very positive. And um, it speaks to my journey with God and how I was able to move on from my past and become the person who God has called me to be. So it's personal? It's personal. It's Part of personal. it is very personal. In the first chapter, I talk about my, my journey um, from three months old where my mother gave me away um, on Lynnhurst Road. Um, she was walking along Lynnhurst Road. She was actually headed to RJR. Um, to make an announcement because she had a three-month-old baby and she was unable to care for me. That's what she felt at the time. And as she was headed to RJR, uh, a stranger, uh, my father, the man who raised me, stopped and um, asked her if she needed a ride or some help. And as she got into the car, he um, asked her, you know, how can I help you? And she started to explain her plight. She told him that she had a baby and she was unable to care for her and um, she would like him to drop her to RJR. And he intercepted and said, you don't have to do this. Um, my wife and I have been actually praying for a baby. Mm. baby. We're unable to have children and we will take the baby and we will care for her. So I see him here as my savior um, right here on earth. And that's, that's how my journey began. And so as I grew into consciousness of my story, it was revealed to me somewhere around 11 or 12, I started to, to become an extremely rebellious teen. And um, I gave a lot of trouble, a lot of trouble in high school, a lot of trouble. And um, so much so that, you know, my parents had to get counseling for me. You know, I was diagnosed with ADHD, mm -hmm. um, attention hyperactivity disorder. Up to this day, I don't feel like anything wrong with me, you know. It's just, <laughs> you know, you're bouncing off the wall as a teenager and they have to find, find a something. reason. They have yeah. to find a reason. And so my, my love of um, special education, as we now know it, began then because I wanted to, I always remember myself as a child wanting to help um, other teenagers like myself who just didn't have that outlet. And, um, you know, which, with much prayer and much counseling, I was able to <laughs> study myself long enough to get through the CXCs. And then when I finally made it to lower six, I went to St. Andrew High School for girls, you know, I, w I wasn't following the rules. And rightly so, I'm not speaking um, negatively about my school because it's the best. Um, but, you know, they had to ask me to leave because I was not <laughs> yes. um, cooperating. cooperating. Mm -hmm. And um, it's funny enough, the same... Um, Leadership, the same principal who had to inadvertently ask me to leave was the same one who employed me five years later <laughs> as a special ed teacher. And that was where I started my teaching career um, at my alma mater. A very so, interesting journey that yes. you've just given us a, a peek into and you go further in the book. And I go further. So chapter one talks a little bit about who I am, my journey. And then um, my husband and I um, were residing overseas and I started attending a church. And, you know, both of us had been raised in church, but had not been living as Christians. You know, right before I left Jamaica, I was still party. You yeah, know, I was the ultimate party girl. Um, you know, if trust me, I went <laughs> out a lot. And, um, you know, we just, we just, we found God. And we were able to just delve into the word and study. And I just, I morphed. I became, I moved from the caterpillar into becoming a butterfly. Okay. Because when you, when you're given away, it's very hard for you to make sense of, you know, who am I? You know, you, you don't know who you look like. You don't, you don't know anybody who is in a biological family. And then you struggle and grapple with 
um, you know, why, why would my mother have felt the need to give me away? And so for a long time, I, I struggled with um, a low sense of self and I had very low self-esteem. And then when you're asked to leave, kicked out of high school, you know, yeah. in layman terms, that just, um, just that crushes your spirit. And so I, I, I really was not in tune with who I was until, you know, I got married and my husband started to reaffirm, mm. you know, all those things, um, the good parts about me. And when I read the word of God and it told me that I was fearfully and wonderfully made, and I'm like, really? Me? Yeah, yeah. Me? Yeah. And then it started to tell you, um, you're made in God's image and likeness. And I was like, me? Really? <laughs> With the big nose? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. And it really, really empowered me to start to um, not only think like the daughter of a king, but apply my thoughts to action, you know, or apply actions to my thought. So I was able really to just emancipate my own self from mental slavery, you know, and um, those words in that song, I mean, it's really, really true. Yeah. And so I morphed. And once I was able to do that, then I recognized the things that was holding me back, mm -hmm. which was, I talk about it in chapter two. Right. Um, specifically, I talk about um, the steps that the I took, the renewal right. pyramid, like mm -hmm. the number one thing that I had to clean up was influence. Correct. And a lot of times we, 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 we don't understand how the people we choose to surround ourselves with have an impact on our, Can I get an <laughs> on our life. And so I really had to do a cleaning up of the persons who I chose to chose. have an influence so happy that you um, chose. On my, in my life. And once I started to do that, you know, I, were, I was surrounding myself with people who affirmed the positive parts of me. And they were like, yeah, man, Sally, you can do this. And yeah, I see you like that. And, and I'm like, really me? You know, because for such a long time, I thought that I was like nothing, seriously. Yeah. And so I just know that there are a lot of young people today. If I felt it, I know that there are a lot of young people today who, who experience it. And I'm also an educator. Um, not just a writer, you know, I'm a special education teacher myself because from being um, kicked out of high school and being diagnosed with ADHD, I also wanted to be that voice for other teenagers um, out there who may be experiencing hurt. Right. Um, and, you know, so I don't think teachers, it may not be bad teachers. I just think it's just that a lot of them may not understand. Okay. Correct. They don't and I do believe that um, I'm able to bridge that gap right. and, um, you know, help. How did you, how did, how did all that inspiration move into a book? What prompted you? Okay, so I literally, you ever hear people say, God told me and yes. God spoke to me. Yes. I literally had my own encounter um, with God. And up to about a year ago, it was just me, 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 I, 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 what can, you know, it was just all about me and my story. But then God was like, you're not just here on earth to take up space, you know? You're here to be of service to the world. You're here to make a difference. You're here. Your story can empower others. And so I just started to, to write. I've always been a good writer. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it, it, I just started to put it down on paper. And he was like, I need for you to share your story and not hide it. Um, you know, there are a lot of friends. There are a lot of people I went to, to high school with. Mm -hmm. And they're hearing my story now. And they're like... Sally, like, you were adopted? Yes. Like, seriously? Like seriously? Uh, yeah. Yeah, and, um, you know, a lot of people didn't know, so it's, it's, it was hard for me to share, but now I'm just using it as a tool to empower others, and I want to show young people that, listen, if I made it, you can make it. <laughs> the renewal. The renewal. What is your favorite chapter, if you have one in that book? I do. My favorite chapter is number two um, because it, it, it chronicles my, the process that I went through. And on page 10, it talks about the renewal pyramid, um, and it goes through the steps that I took to become um, a more confident, not fully confident, but more confident um, person who I can, uh, where I can avail myself for God to use me. And the renewal pyramid, I talk about changing influence, then goals, 
um, you have to have some goals and then you have to apply consistent action to those goals. And then when you start to reap those consistent results over time, it, it makes you bold. It does. And I talk about boosted boldness. And man, once you get boosted to that boldness. boosted boldness. I like that. Once hashtag. you start to <laughs> hashtag boosted, boosted boldness. boldness. Once you get to that place where, oh wow, if I start to apply actions to what I'm thinking and this, you know this journey really can allow me to produce some type of results and a lot of people like to talk um but they're not doing anything and so that's what chapter two talks about mm. it talks about applying oh, action so like to me. your <laughs> i also talk about a place in the book where um i said there were many business plans and and, and ideas for um just promoting myself within my profession or business wise that I shared with my husband and it never made made it past the pillow or the front door. That's, uh, not, that's not one of my favorite um, yeah. sentences. Yes. I, I'm looking through the book and I realize that at the end of, well, I'm assuming all the chapters, you have an actual place where people need to do something. Yes. It's a journal entry yes. and you start with a quote by yourself yes. and then you have lines where you ask questions and you prompt the reader to yes. respond in writing so you're actually pulling us to respond, respond. and to help ourselves yes what, yes. what what was what was it that decided because a lot Why? of times people read books and then you read it and you're inspired for the moment and then it goes true and you know zig ziglar one of his most famous famous quotes says um you know people say that motivation don't last which is exactly so because you need it every day mm -hmm. and so i wanted to include at the end of every chapter a quote um an encouraging or inspirational quote and a space where people could write and so i asked them you know what is your reason at the end of the first chapter, mm -hmm. which is entitled My Reason, and what are your thoughts for going forward? Right. And, and then you it started with a quote which says, A road with a reason will lead to a destination of purpose. Yes. Find your reason and make your life purposeful. Yes. Sally Ann Gray. And then you proceed to ask the question. Yes. So yeah, you're like, think about this. Yes. Think about this. Yes. What is your purpose? So how do you I understand that you are not just an author and an educator, you're also into doing speaking engagements as yes. a motivational speaker. And you're also a mother to two children, yes. two young children. Yes. Explain how the renewal has helped you parent. <sighs> well, my son, um, Malachi, he was one of my inspirations. One of, um, my husband was also one, but he in particular was one of the um, inspirations behind the renewal because He's six and he's very precocious and he knows what he wants and he says it and he's just very resolute about the things that, you know, he's going to do in this life. And I was like, man, my son is six years old and he knows what he wants to do. And, you know, you'll say, well, Malachi, did you mean so and so? And he'd be like, no, mommy, this is it. And so he, he, he was the inspiration for the book. And then in writing the book and watching myself change and morph from the beginning to the end it has helped it has empowered me to just take more time spend more time listen more because he's just that child who knows what he wants um out of life and i learned so much from him and so in terms of how the renewal helped me to be a better parent it just helped me to listen more and enjoy um, the, the small moments more and, and get out of the habit of rushing. Yeah. You know, we're rushing, oh, rushing, rushing, God. rushing, rushing. And um, I just really want to spend that time with my children. Malachi now. taught you that. Yes, little did. precautions. He's yes. like, listen to me, mommy. Yes, listen mommy, listen to me, mommy. mommy, you're not listening. And a child shall lead them. <laughs> yes, and a child shall lead them. All right, so where can we get the book? Um, where is it being distributed? Okay, so in Jamaica, on shelves, it's at Book Ophelia, which is on 92 Hope Road. Yes. So go out and get your copy. Yes. Yes, yes. And also, um, it's available online at Amazon um, for people residing in the UK, Europe. It's on Amazon UK as well. And it's also on Barnes & Noble online. And it's available girl. from the kin on the Kindle app. Very Go foreign. Girl. Oh, girl. Very foreign. This is really good. <laughs> really good. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Sally, for passing through our book club this month. Thank and she you. told you, if you want to self-help, Go on out and get the renewal. Revive everything necessary and power within, which is renew. All right, you see it? You see what she did there? Yeah.
The, the first letter of each of those words? Yeah. Renew? All right, all right, all right. I know mm -hmm. you got it. We have a little bit more for you after the break, so don't go nowhere. It's CVM at sunrise. I'm on.